how it all kind of did work out, you know. And that was kind of when we began the beautiful merger relationship management company of Ryan, which Ryan unbelievably helped that situation. I know that he, I, I talked to him all many a day, you know, about what we could do. And, and I know he talked to Carl and stuff. And, you know, we, we, we tried to make this thing work as best we could. We knew Jesse was going to leave after the record. And my initial reaction was, you know what, let's get him out now. Let him, let him quit, let him get out of it so we can maybe start something and do, do a fresh record with, with new people and the band wouldn't break up, whatever. And definitely having Jesse leave, I think, showed to Dan the, the dedication and the stability that we could maybe have with, with me and Russ in it that there wouldn't be a reason for Dan not to want to be 100% either because it would pretty much be me, Dan, and Russ's baby now and, and nobody else would be there to ruin it because it would be ours. And I think Dan saw that, and, and I know that Dan always loved the band and always wanted to be in the band, and, and I knew that he felt extremely hurt and betrayed when, when you know, the whole, the whole thing came about with you know, him leaving and because of his like, supposed not dedication to the band because of his tattoo shop, that when I started talking to Dan about coming back, I, I told him straight up that I wouldn't do the band unless he would come back in it, and I know Russ felt the same way. So, you know, thank God that, that Dan was really into doing that and we brought Dan in. There have been a couple of different singers within Dan's tenure. You know, if you, if you call Dan's tenure from uh, Blood and Fire up until the present time, there have been times where Dan wasn't in the band, uh, he was at home, he was doing other things, and there were other guys in there. And um, uh, I can say that all of them did an admirable job, but, uh, you know, none of them were, you know, none of them were as good as Dan, and I think all of them would, would admit that. And more importantly than just a, a talent level would be the fact that, you know, um, Dan is responsible for the lyrics and the feelings that went into those songs. You know, the, the, most Zayo songs are extremely personal to Dan, um, you know, and anybody else singing them is basically just doing a cover band. We definitely knew that getting a new drummer was was going to be probably the hardest thing that we've ever done as a band because everybody was so focused in on Jesse and his drumming abilities and, and you know thinking that he was the band and thinking that he wrote the songs, which we all know now that that's not true. But I think a lot of kids and a lot of fans, since he was the outspoken one of the band and the one that did most of all the interviews, they they looked at Jesse that he was he was Zayo. So. We knew that we had to find somebody that definitely was capable of, of playing what Jesse played and, you know, maybe bringing something new into it that Jesse didn't bring into it, which maybe even as little as the stability and the love of playing drums would be what it was. We had a slew of people we wanted to talk to, but it just didn't work. And, and things started getting really, really scary there. And we almost came to a decision where Russ would play the drums on the record because Russ, you know, Russ is a great drummer and he could have definitely done it. But, um, you know, kind of weird how things come full circle because we were doing Jade Meridian with Steve and Sean, and all of a sudden we're drummerless and bass playerless, <laughs> which is exactly what those two guys did. I was in the band Jade Meridian with Sean and uh, Scott and Russ, and we had done that for a while, and that was really the first experience I ever had. Like, touring was with Jade Meridian. I, knew, I think we went out with, like, in Berlin and um, like under oath and stuff. I always heard the drama and everything like that, you know, with um, with uh, Jesse and all that kind of stuff. And finally, when I learned that you know he was done with with Zayo, it just seemed like a, the natural, common sense decision because I had been in you know Jade Meridian with them and 
um, I was like, you know, if if you want, you could just, you know, I could try, see how it works, you know, if it if it doesn't work, you know, it's no problem, with, you know, but if, if it does, and it, I would love to be, you know, in a, in a, in a band like, like Zayo, you know, and tour and, and just have fun playing drums. Steve actually came to me and he's like, I promise you, if you give me a chance to do this, I will practice, work really hard, and I, I will do this for you. I want to be part of this. I, I think we could do this, and I, I want to, I want to have a shot at it. And I didn't really know if Steve could really play the style that Zaya was, but at the same time, I know Steve's a very driven type of person, so I'm sure if he put his mind to something, he could do it, and that's exactly what me and Russ thought. So we let him buy, he, we bought him a double bass pedal, which he hasn't played double bass probably in years and years right before the start of Funeral of God. He took a whole month to rehearse to play this double bass, and it just turned into exactly what we needed. I mean, I think, you know, when people hear the new record and hear Steve play, they might not necessarily hear Jesse, but they hear what, what Zayo's always needed, which is a solid, real drummer. And he's there, he's, he's playing the parts right every night, playing exactly what the songs need to not overshadow them and not, you know, be as flashy and over top of everybody else, but he plays right in there with all of us. For the first time, I think, in Zaya, we felt like if we did this and, and got it to work out right, that it would be the best it's ever been. And it would be 